Now in a real world scenario, when you're going to create an image using Packer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you bake as much as possible into the image itself so that you don't have to do any manual configuration afterwards. So even if you're building an Nginx server, um, you know, you're obviously gonna to have to do more than just installing Nginx, right? You wanna make sure that you've set up your firewall. Uh, you're gonna to have to install any of the packages. You may need to copy over, you know, your actual web application. Uh, so there's gonna be a lot more tasks that you'd actually have to do than what we did in this application. Uh, and so I wanna kind of walk you through, you know, what that would look like uh, if we were using the shell provisioner. So I'm gonna create our third project. It's gonna be very similar, but it's just to show you uh, one slight change that we can make to our provisioner. I'm gonna copy project two and paste that. And I'm just gonna rename this project three. And let's open up this example.json. And so, you know, like I said, um, there's gonna be a lot more commands that we would wanna run in a real world scenario, right? And so, you know, we've got the sleep 30, we've got the sudo apt update, and then we've got install nginx, but we'd also want to um, enable nginx. So that's going to ensure that, you know, if our server reboots, we want nginx to start up automatically on reboot, and that's not gonna be configured by default. So we'd have to do a system CTL enable uh, nginx and then we'd also want to configure our firewall as well so we could do a sudo ufw allow uh, so it's, we gotta allow ssh so that we can connect to it uh, then we'd also want to allow um, http because this is a web server and we'd also want to allow https so ssl traffic and then at this point, the actual firewall is still not enabled. We've just defined the rules for the firewall. So we'd wanna do a sudo ufw enable, so that's going to actually start our firewall. Uh, and so as you can see at this point, uh, you know, this config is starting to look a little messy and it's not the easiest to read. I mean, if I save it, it should automatically format it so that's a little bit easier. But once again, even this is a overly simplified example of what you would actually see in the real world. There could be hundreds of different commands that you'd wanna run. And so if you find that that is the case with what you're trying to do, instead of doing an inline option like this, we actually have another option within Packer. So if we go back to the shell provisioner, um, so instead of doing an inline, we can pass in a script. And so we can define all the commands that we wanna run in a separate file and then just reference that script so that uh, first of all, our Packer config is a lot more readable uh, and it's gonna make it look a little bit simpler and cleaner. It's not gonna change the way anything operates, um, but it will make everything just structured a little bit neater. And so under our project, what I wanna do is I wanna create a new file, and this is going to be called, uh, you can call it whatever you want, I'm gonna call it setup.sh. And all of the commands that we would run here, I'm gonna just move them over to the setup.sh file. So we'll copy all of these. I'm gonna paste them in here, fix the formatting. And here, since this is not a JSON file, this is just like a bash script. Uh, first of all, we can remove the comma and the quotations. All right, and then here we can remove the inline option and instead change it to script. And then now we have to pass in the location to our script. So from the perspective of this example.json file, we can see that the script is in the same directory. So I could just type in setup.sh. Um, however, if this file is stored anywhere else in your operating system, you're gonna wanna pass in the full path to that file so that um, you know, Packer knows how to find that file. And so we could save this and I'm just going to quickly run this for you guys. And we wanna make sure we move into project three and now I'm gonna do a Packer First of all, let me make sure I save everything. Packer build example.json. And I realized that I forgot to change the AMI name because we already have an AMI called that. So I'm going to call this project three. And let's let that run. All right, so now that's complete. Let's uh, go back to our console. And let's take a look at our AMIs and we can see that we now have that new AMI. 
All right, so let's go ahead and deploy an EC2 instance with this image and just verify that all of the changes we wanted actually got applied. I'm just gonna select this and we're going to launch an image. And so once that's booted up, let's once again connect to it. All right, and let's do a system CTL status engine X. Yep, and we can see it's running. And on top of that, we did enable it. So uh, anytime our machine gets reloaded, it'll automatically start Nginx for us. Now, since we have Nginx actually running on this machine, we can navigate to this IP address in our web browser and actually take a look at the default web page that Nginx loads. Um, but before we do that, we actually have to modify the security group um, because the security group for this host is only allowing SSH, so we can only SSH to it. So let's actually in edit the inbound rules and we're gonna add a couple of rules right here. Uh, so the first rule is we're gonna allow HTTP, so that's gonna be port 80, and we're gonna allow it from all IP addresses. And then we're also going to add HTTPS, so that's going to be for port 443, and we're going to allow all um, all prefixes. So let's save those rules. And now if we go back to instances and we go to this IP address, right, you can see the default web page that Nginx loads. So it just tells you, you know, welcome to Nginx. So this just confirms that everything was installed and working properly.